getting into the room, it is always intimidating when you're facing people who do such things in this world as we don't accept. Um, but I think, you know, focus on the issue and push right. it, and we did. And they didn't, in some cases, didn't accept it right. um, and try to put you in your place. But I think we were strong enough to push back. Abdul Kaha Balki is the spokesperson for the Taliban's Ministry of Foreign Affairs. He joins us now from Kabul. Thank you very much for being on Al Jazeera. Now, you put restrictions in place on female aid workers. Why are you putting the lives of your own people at risk? Um, well, it is important uh, to realize that uh, some of these restrictions placed on uh, foreign NGOs uh, a part of uh, uh, this decision-making uh, was uh, uh, to curb the activities of uh, some um, uh, NGOs uh, that were uh, trying to uh, social engineer a change in Afghanistan. Uh, and as the cardinal principle of uh, um, NGO work is uh, impartiality and neutrality, uh, to that end, uh, uh, those uh, uh, NGOs uh, who were really involved in humanitarian work and were committed to this principle uh, and not uh, interfering in the uh, local customs and norms. Uh, they were given exemptions uh, in some areas, including health. Uh, they have resumed their work, uh, mm. and we welcome that. But despite those... Uh, as for uh, those uh, who were unable or unwilling uh, to stick to this principle, uh, uh, they have only... Uh, shown uh, that uh, perhaps this decision was uh, in the best interest of Afghanistan. And uh, in the end, uh, we uh, will continue uh, to prioritize uh, the stability and security of Afghanistan. But in doing uh, that, we'll the UN has described uh, it. Sorry, to, sorry uh, to interrupt. Uh, the, the UN has described it as endangering urgent, life saving humanitarian operations. I mean, are you, what's more important to the Taliban, uh, saving lives or restricting women's access uh, to, to restricting women from working? for NGOs. What, what do you put ahead of the other? Because it seems uh, from this rule that you are making women decide. Uh, I think that is a, a very good question that is uh, directed uh, primarily at the United Nations uh, and also the international community at large. Uh, I mean, this humanitarian situation that has come about in Afghanistan uh, it is uh, indeed concerning. I mean, uh, we don't deny that it's uh, uh, something uh, that is an uh, ideal situation. Uh, however, uh, we must remember and acknowledge uh, that this uh, economic situation was precipitated by the 20-year occupation, uh, and it has been exacerbated uh, by the re-imposition of sanctions, by, by asset freezes, and uh, by restrictions on banking. Uh, which is hindering the uh, efforts of the government uh, to try to deal with this crisis. The UN, uh, sadly, uh, sadly uh, has uh, been ineffective in dealing with this uh, human-driven, uh, man-made uh, humanitarian crisis. But you, uh, and, uh, the Taliban, some, have been uh, in power for the, the over UN. a year now. Sorry to interrupt. You, the Taliban, you've been in power for over a year now. You've got to take some responsibility for the situation in your own country, surely. You can't just put it on the UN and other international uh, organisations and countries, surely. I mean, sure, we've, uh, the, the responsibility of the government, I mean, we have been uh, very effective uh, in our response uh, in terms of uh, increasing commerce activities, uh, uh, in terms of providing job opportunities to the people, uh, and also allowing access for humanitarian actors, those who truly are involved in, uh, in life-saving uh, activities. Uh, we have even given them exemptions. Uh, I mean, it is the burden uh, of this, uh, the large part of this burden is uh, on the international community, especially the countries uh, that uh, purportedly uh, champion human rights, uh, they are calling for further sanctions uh, and further uh, punitive measures uh, against the government. But those uh, sanctions of are being put in place in the of because, of the, because of the, the measures that. Vulnerable. Sorry to interrupt. Again, those sanctions and those, uh, the, the sanctions that the international community have put in place are because of the restrictions that you have put in place against women and girls in your own country. So isn't it on you, isn't it on the Taliban to, uh, I guess, work with the international community, work with the UN, work with Amina Mohammed, uh, with the, uh, the D Deputy Secretary General of the UN, and, and actually come to a solution here? Uh, I mean, again, I have to return back to uh, the question that you posed me uh, to me earlier. 
what is important, uh, the lives of the ordinary Afghans, uh, or uh, is it uh, uh, some values uh, of the uh, Western countries that they're trying to impose? Again, uh, the, if you're referring to uh, some of uh, these restrictions, uh, supposed restrictions in Afghanistan, uh, one of the principles, uh, the main principles uh, of the UN is non-interference in the internal affairs uh, of other countries. Uh, I mean, this is an internal uh, matter of Afghanistan. Uh, we're trying our very best uh, and exerting efforts to find solutions uh, to the problems at hand. Uh, but that does not give uh, uh, the, should not give anyone the right uh, to call for punitive measures, uh, to try to isolate and punish the most vulnerable people, uh, which are, again, the women uh, and girls and children uh, of Afghanistan. Uh, by taking such measures. I mean, uh, the uh, solution lies uh, in positive interaction uh, mm. and in positive engagement, uh, trying to find, working together, uh, finding resolutions and solutions to the problems at hand, uh, and in the meantime, uh, helping and assisting uh, those in need. OK, what will it take for the Taliban to allow women unrestricted access to education and the ability to work? Is that going to be able to be a reality for women and girls in Afghanistan while the Taliban is in power? I mean, this uh, idea that uh, there's a ban on uh, education is absolutely incorrect. It is part of uh, a particular narrative and agenda that has been driven by uh, some actors uh, who, again, have uh, taken hostage the UN and uh, uh, in sense of helping the people of Afghanistan in, uh, instead of working on areas uh, and uh, in a way uh, that empowers uh, the government uh, to take the needed actions to uh, help and provide the basic needs uh, of Afghanistan. When it comes to, again, these restrictions, uh, this, this is a, a suspension. I mean, uh, we uh, are working on finding a solution to this. This is not uh, something that is a blanket ban. It had never has been. Uh, there was uh, schools open, there was universities open. Uh, they have been, again, uh, suspended, and we are working on finding a permanent solutions uh, to reopening this. But again, uh, other institutes are open, educational institutes, madrasas, uh, online learning, homeschooling. I mean, these are open. This is not uh, a ban or uh, a war against education uh, for girls and women. The UN claim that you could be using women's rights as a bargaining chip uh, with the international community. You're politicising humanitarian aid. What do you say to that? Uh, I think that would be a, a very wrong assessment and a wrong take uh, by anyone. Uh, to us, our foremost priority is the rights uh, and liberties of our own people. Uh, that is why uh, we uh, engaged uh, in war with foreign occupation because we wanted to secure the right, uh, rights uh, and independence of the people of Afghanistan. That is our foremost priority. Or if you look at uh, the humanitarian section, I mean, it is us who have uh, taken these uh, addicts off the streets. We, it is us who have uh, provided money and opportunity to beggars on the street. It is us. Uh, who are uh, providing jobs uh, despite the sanctions, despite the restrictions, despite the collective punishment attempts uh, of those who are purportedly care about the rights of Afghans more than the Afghan government itself. There's concerns that uh, the Taliban wants Afghanistan to become more and more isolated from the international community. Do you want Afghanistan to be part of the international community going forward? We've always, from the very first day, uh, always advocated for uh, integration of Afghanistan uh, into the uh, international community. We've always maintained uh, the position that we will do so in line with our Islamic and in line with our national values and principles. Uh, and uh, we will continue to work with like-minded countries uh, and partners in trying to find uh, solutions uh, and in trying to increase commerce, people-to-people uh, -people interaction uh, and also diplomatic uh, and other relations. OK, thank you so much. That's Abdul Kaha Balki, a spokesperson for Taliban's Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Thanks very much for being on Al Jazeera. Uh, thank you for having me. Well, to other news in the U.S. is designating Russia's Wagner Group.